I'm Perrin and Lincoln and I are partners, both in business and we live together. And we own Rothery Photography. So we are portrait photographers, which means we're all about the people, really. So awesome. we have a commercial side to our business and a private side to our business. Awesome. Tell me, it, when you say personal side, is that weddings, parties, personal thing? Or is it just personal, I mean, your own life, <laughs> nothing to do? That's personal, private. It's a, so that's for people who want to have a portrait session with us. So it's for them personally. Whereas the other side is the commercial side. So that yeah. is your headshots, branding photography and event photography. And venture a little bit into products. It depends on what the product is and what the client's after and how they want their website to look. Awesome. So three things, product, which sounds really cool, headshots and events. They're the kind of three main things you do. The main thing really is the portrait pictures. Oh, so it's, business portraits. Yeah, so yeah. the business portraits and then the, the private portraits for, for okay. people for themselves. <coughs> so tell me, who's your ideal client and why is it so important to get a really good headshot? Our ideal clients are people who want to invest in their photographers for their business so understand how powerful it is. And for our private clients, just somebody who wants a big piece of wall art, really, or several pieces of wall art that, that's all about them, that captures them in an environment that they want to be photographed in, wearing what yeah. they want to wear. So they're our ideal clients. Headshots are really important because it's the first contact most of the time that people have with you as a person. So they may see mm. your headshot on your website or on your LinkedIn. So they have to, it's really important that those headshots are professionally taken, nice and sharp lit, and that the person looks relaxed, professional, and is connected through eye contact to the person looking yeah. at them. And they do have to speak to the, to the clientele that they're wanting to attract to their target market, if you like. If the person with the headshot's got a pint of beer and they've just run a, a marathon and they're all in the sweats and they're a financial expert, it doesn't really convey that message of professionalism whereas they, they might prefer to be in a pinstripe suit because that's their kind of client who they're attracting, or they might just be relaxed in a shirt. But all told, it's got to be good lighting, it's got to be sharp, it's got to be friendly and approachable. And as it says, especially on a profile like LinkedIn, you've only got a tiny little circle where you've got your profile picture to be. It should just be your head and not body, yeah. And, and I love that description. I think uh, what you said initially, it's about telling that story in a, in a snapshot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You've got three seconds and you make that judgment of, I like that person, I don't like that person, I resonate with that person, I don't resonate with that person. Yeah. So in that three seconds, you've got to tell a story that really shouts way beyond what you can actually maybe say or do in that first impression. Yeah. And then, yeah, all the technicalities of lighting, the getting the composition, mm. composure of the person as well, so they come across right on screen. <coughs> You touched on LinkedIn, that's a really interesting point. Let's go back to the, your profile pictures. What, what, do you have any best practices or any recommendations and tips? We all say, it, sometimes I think people overthink headshots a bit. That's our job really to do that for you, as far as getting the lighting and getting you connected with the people who are looking mm -hmm. at you or looking at your picture. As for, the thing that we always say to our clients is, just you just want to look the way that you would look if you were either meeting a client or you're meeting a new client or you're going networking. So how would you first react to that person? How would you smile? How would you greet them? What would you be wearing? And that's a really good starting point that mm, we yeah. think to start thinking about how do you want your profile picture to look? It's no different. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And when you say it out loud like that, it sounds so obvious. obvious. <laughs> but when you see so many LinkedIn profiles yeah. and it's like a logo, who yeah. walks around with a big logo <laughs> on their face or a business card, yeah. they're real people. Yeah. And so it's a great way to it's a great way to position it. And mm. what we do at Vox Media is exactly the same thing. And we have, we love this line of humanizing your brand. And I think so many businesses hide behind logos, brand colors, fonts, yeah. strap lines, mm. things like that. It's just put yourself out there. And like you said, when you go out and you network with people, what do you do? You're meeting people in the flesh. Yeah. Just start to do that online. And I think it's about educating the business community about how to network online. Yeah. So now the profile pictures, you can have the videos on there. So mm. you started doing more of those and what's your advice to people who are having those? Yeah, yeah, great question. So we've done a handful of them. I can't say we've done hundreds and hundreds yet, but I suppose the, the wave will come. What we always recommend is, once again, just a continu continuation, I can't even say the word, <laughs> of, of what you guys do with regards to think about your attire, think about your target market, dress the part like you would as if you were going out networking. 
And then beyond that, it's about just like your elevator pitch. Don't talk about yourself, talk about the problems you solve for your customers. Yeah. And the first three seconds buys you the next 10 and so on. Because we live in a world, and especially online, on any digital platform where there's video which people want to consume, we live in a world where the consumer is in control. So they can switch off at any time. They find you boring. They're not going to say, can yeah. you just get to the point? They're just going to switch off. Yeah. They're just going to fast forward, switch off, switch off or move on. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, we've got to be super critical about our messaging, about yeah. how we are presenting ourselves. What are we saying? The way we are saying it and making sure that we get our message across to our potential prospects about the problems that we can solve, mm -hmm. how we can serve them and make their life better. If we talk about me, they're going to go, yeah, whatever, <laughs> just move on. Yeah. And a lot of Absolutely. business, if you look at even just the profiles and people's write-ups, a lot of it is like a CV. Yeah. And for the people that are looking for jobs and for recruiting on LinkedIn, fine, fair enough. Yeah. But for most businesses that are on LinkedIn for lead gen and for opportunities mm -hmm. and to connect with other businesses, our guidance is always around what problem to solve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we're the same, aren't we? we yeah, definitely. From that angle as well, yeah. how we can help. Those images in the profile pictures, though, now they remind me a bit of Harry Potter when they have a still picture and then they start moving around. They look a bit <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that, because at first it's a still <laughs> image, isn't it? And then you click on it and then it starts moving. It comes it's alive. really weird. Yeah, it comes yeah. alive, yeah. <laughs> it yeah, does. Yeah. It's like them old horror movies, they walk past the painting and the eyes are yeah. following you. Yeah. You're like, what was all that about? I think it's a good idea, though. I like it. I yeah. like that it's that, that you have a good image to jog the person in and then the video starts. Yeah. It's such a good idea. It's much better than having to go down and read yeah. what people do. And you were saying about the message that people put out when the picture's out. Yeah. And it's a dodgy line between pictures that you like that resonate with you and yeah. tell your story mm. and pictures that resonate with the client and their story. Because you might be a solo kind of guy that likes the countryside and climbing up mountains and mm. doing all that bravery thing. And so you might think, I'd love a shot where I'm climbing off a mountain, I'm swinging off a rope and doing all this. But you target market a family. Yeah. And they're not going to relate to that. So yeah. you, you've got to be mm. careful as to what who you're sending the message to and what Absolutely. is each other says about you or is it about them? So right. it's the same thing, but visual. I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's a great point and I think there's a place for everything. And maybe LinkedIn, that first image, that is not the place for that kind of illustration. Straight away, Instagram jump out to me or Facebook, save them images for there. Yeah. But that said, business on LinkedIn is done after one builds a relationship. Nobody looks at a profile and thinks, I'm going to do business with this person today. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's built out on the back of a relationship. So how do you build a relationship? So I think you can get to know somebody on a I'm looking for this kind of service. I'm looking for a photographer. I'll check out the LinkedIn profile. I see a nice profile image. But as I start to go through the feed, once I start to see the kind of content you're putting out, mm -hmm. then I'm going to really resonate with that. Mm. Yeah. If it's my fit, I might engage with you. You might engage back with me. And if I saw them photographs of you out on a mountain, not you personally, but that <laughs> person out on the mountain climbing yeah. and swinging up yeah. trees or whatever they like to do, yeah. go in that easier, then that's fine because you get to know that person. Yeah a bit more intimately mm. i really want to know who yeah. you guys are yeah. and vice versa yeah so i think that first profile image i think you're dead right mm. think about your customer in, in your content but for linkedin i think it's about exposing yourself a little bit so people get to know who you are what do you believe in what's your vision what are you passionate about yeah and it's not always about business no you can touch on those points can't yeah. it's just about Absolutely. selling it's yeah. about kind of dovetailing it all in really Absolutely. isn't it that's how it works yeah it's being a bit open and sharing a bit of your your inner self, your non-business self, your personal life. And again, that's generates a bit of trust or a bit of two-way openness between you and a client. So mm -hmm. yeah. I'm letting you into my life, not just my business as, as well. I agree. I think one of the things that people don't realise about uh, headshots is that we tend to think that people just go straight to our site and there's our headshot. But if they're searching for us, if they're searching say for you, for a videographer, for a filmmaker in Leeds, they're going to put that in the search box mm -hmm. and then all those pictures are all going to come up, all those profile pictures. And it's those that people are going to relate to. So if you've got, a, like you, you've got a good picture on yours and if the guy underneath you is there with, a say, like a glass of wine, then your brain is very quickly going to look at those two and say, he obviously looks for you, look more professional. So that's where mm, I'm going. Now, sure. Your brain is yeah. flicking through those pictures and making decisions very quickly about mm. the people that are in front of them. Even somebody looking away from the camera, mm. it's, it's just as you're flying through those pictures, mm. you're thinking that person's not interested because they're not connecting with me. It's like you're in a room and you're looking around to see who's in there and who's connecting with you. 
And sometimes we forget that we're on that search list as well as being actually on our site. Absolutely. I love that. And you're touching on a really important point where looking down the lens and looking off the lens and how it helps with that, building that connection. Yeah. Mm. And uh, that happens a lot in the work we do. With a lot of people, we get into the studio and, and when we're shooting, they find it harder to look down the lens. And they find it easy to look off the lens. Quite often off the lens, they're talking to me or we have a producer where that is t- talking them through the questions to pull the story out. Yeah. But when you're looking down the lens, they find it a lot more challenging to get comfortable, yeah. to get normal, to be human. And uh, what I've learned, and I'd be interested to get your opinion on this, if you're confident and you can do it well, is always really solid because you connect with the audience, you connect with the viewer. Sometimes looking off the lens, depending on the content, does feel more like thought leadership, that you're actually, from a viewer's point of view, you're listening into some thought leadership yeah. kind of content. Almost eavesdropping on. Yeah, and I, I don't know if that translates in, into photography as well. Sometimes when you look off, off the lens, it's like a thinking moment, yeah, and you capture that. Yeah, it's it, perfect. Yeah, and, what, so. and then you're drawn in thinking, I, I wonder what they're looking at, what they're thinking, yeah. what's going yeah. on in this yeah. shot. Yeah. yeah, and we're only talking at first about the profile pictures, there's definitely a connection. Sure. But then after that, you can have lots of fun with different looks and, as you're saying, looking at, off lens and speaking to, looking if you're yeah. speaking to people and doing something or whatever. It's it's just that yeah. that profile pictures, that initial shot, and then you can go of into, yeah. and we create something that we call emotipics. Well, so, <laughs> say that again. We call them emoti pics, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they're a lot of fun. So we'll bring somebody into the studio and it's really what we're doing is we're generating images to help them with their posts, aren't we? Yeah. It's because it's just the images or the videos that bring people into your posts or into your website first and then sure. takes you onto your narrative. So we try and generate pictures that people can put with their posts that are going to catch people's eyes. So it may be an expression that they're really worried about something, so that's an expression, or they're cheering, they're excited, or it could be a gesture, or they could be having props with them, whatever it is that they want to say about their business through their post, and we try and help them with that by creating these emoji pics. <laughs> they're a lot of fun to do, aren't they? The thumb, thumbs up, for example, it's a big yeah. smiley thumbs up picture, Brilliant. and then they can yeah. put whatever it is, had a great day today, had a great client, had another great client. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think Canva a successful would network, whatever the message might be, is 25 mm. years in business for going great. Yeah. Brilliant. I love it. I love it. And it, once again, it just is the, the foundation is telling a story, isn't it? It's all about yeah. storytelling. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just different landmarks or milestones in their business where they can just share a story and a nice photograph yeah. with that to really yeah. uh, give it some more visibility. We had one lady that did it. She's a marketing person and she does the marketing archetypes where you can have different, you have that different kind of archetypes, don't you? That you have the, the cowboy or you have... I can the hero, the caregiver, the sage, the, the magician, <laughs> cuddly toy. <laughs> <laughs> Copy percolator. <laughs> so we helped her with all those gestures and we created all those images for her. And then she took it, took the images to an artist and they created the kind of the more of the visual around her. Yeah. They looked brilliant, didn't they? I yeah. mean, looked really cool. Yeah. So, no, it sounds yeah. super cool. What are the three tips that you would always recommend somebody to think about when doing profile pics? <laughs> Oh. Go for it. What are your three tips? If they're doing it themselves. Yeah. Uh, first of all, have good lighting. Okay. Definitely need to be well lit. If they're doing it on a mobile phone, I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it on a mobile phone. If you're doing it yourself, then you need to make sure that your camera is on a stand. Maybe use a remote control or a timer so you can get in front of it, get poised and then you can take the picture because if you don't be doing it like selfie. Yeah, do you? sticky out arm. Yeah, and and look down the camera and connect and smile. Yeah. If, if that's my top three tips. Yeah. So good lighting. If you don't have good lighting, maybe in front of a window where you've got good nice. sunlight coming in. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Nice soft lighting. If there is, maybe put a bit of a curtain over it. Just yeah, maybe like say a, that. Yeah, yeah, you can have it. What do you call those? Like, yeah, curtains. Like, yeah, yeah. Just to just diffuse soften, the light, yeah. soften it a little bit. <coughs> do that. And yeah, connect with the person. That Look down the camera and imagine that you're just seeing them for the first time. It's always a good way to think. Yeah. Seeing them, so you're smiling. It's if you just met them networking, oh, they're a client. Bonus tip. <laughs> oh. There's no rubbish in the background. Flipping yeah. shopping bags, shoes, jackets. Think about what's not in the... Yeah. Is it, what's, Absolutely. Somebody saw one of our posts about headshots and they said, I think I've got a good headshot, what do you think? 
And we had, obviously I had to reply, yeah, it was a really good headshot. But they were obviously in a public toilet. There were bars on the oh, windows yeah. and there was hand soap <laughs> in the back. Yes, come on. Oh, um, yeah. Is this a joke? <laughs> what about you? What are your top three tips for anybody who's putting a video together for their profile? Oh, big question. R really, marries on the back of what you guys have said that if you're going to do it yourself or you're coming into a studio, the things to think about is bring a few different chin of toes. Always be super comfortable. You don't want to be stressed or overly wearing something that looks good, but it makes you feel uncomfortable. So. Mm -hmm. Wear something that's comfortable. Think about the colours. Think about the background, the environment. The lighting absolutely must be right on. But I think the biggest thing is, and I love the way that you position the fact that think about your customer, it's the mindset. What's in your mind? Because that just... It just oozes into your body language. Yeah, it does. And <coughs> you can see in their eyes that yeah. if you can get if you can get yourself with a point of view that you're going to look straight down the lens and I'm going to talk to my next potential customer that's worth that £100 million. And just to have that confidence in you, I think that's where yeah. you want to be. Mm. Beyond that, with regards to the video, about the message, what's the message? People aren't interested in me. They want to know how you can help them. We focus a lot of our time and effort in what problem do you solve? Who do you serve? Think about the pain points and then follow up with, this is how I can help. And people want credibility. Yeah. If they don't know me from Adam, they want to know who else have I worked with, who else do I know. That gives me credibility. And then on the back of that, it just make it easy for people to reach out to you. Technically, it has to be nicely lit. You've got to have good audio. You've got to be well composed with regards to the composure of the frame. It has to look nice. When you see a headshot, doesn't it frustrate you when you see the eyes in the middle of the frame? Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or it's like, that space. It's like, hey, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> and it's like, you've got to fix it in Photoshop or fix it in post, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is a nine-way. Get it right on camera first, yeah. and then it'll only look better when you take it into yeah. Photoshop or into an editing environment. Yeah, that, that you said in the, in the middle of the, your, your second comment about relating to your customer and thinking, uh, what is it I'm going to do to you? And that personality comes out and it shows in their eyes. That's what we've said a, a, a lot in tips since we've been taking photographs of a lot of so many people, is if we take pictures of people's personalities rather than what they actually look like. Because yeah. we've, we've taken pictures of gorgeous models, guys and girls, and yeah. every shot's the same, just the yeah. different shape. Yeah. And there's, there's nothing comes into the picture, is there? Yeah. And then we've had great clients who are just amazing, they're bubbly and lively, and we've just got some amazing shots, and they're not models at all, are they? They're just yeah. ordinary people. Yeah, it is about photographing people's yeah. personality. You know, a lot of the time when people come to us, they when they're with us in that, what we call the studio lounge next door, they're very open and they're laughing and they're mm. not thinking about how they're reacting to us at all. They're just doing it unconsciously or subconsciously. And then when they come into the studio and they see, I guess it's like you, they see all the lights, see the cameras, and then suddenly their brain kicks in and it starts they start to overthink it all and then they start asking questions where should i put my hands how should i start where do you want me to look and then you'll say step to your right and then they go to the left and we go no you're at the right we completely we have to get them to reconnect to us so quite often it takes a while which is really what we're all about we love taking our time with people mm. and getting them to see past the lights past the big lenses and the cameras and then start connecting with us and once they're connecting with us and yeah. we're taking them through a series of posing techniques help them look more confident and feel better and just having some fun really yeah. and then that personality whoever it is on the other side of the camera starts to come through and Lincoln was talking about you know, sometimes when we have maybe like the younger generation they have a kind of a fixed idea of how they need to look on camera because they've that's what they've I guess that's what they've seen all their friends doing and their idols and mm. whatever so they immediately go into that pose and we lose the natural them. So again, and as Link was saying, we have to just spend get that time with the them. And, yeah, get, get, we need get, out get them. Them, yeah, yeah, get them out of their head and get yeah. back to those lovely yeah. pictures that, that, that their that, mum's going to love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, and that being scared in front of the camera, it, that's when the conscious mind kicks in again. And people always, the mums always said to people, why do you always pull that stupid smile when you have a photo <laughs> got It's because you, your conscious mind's taken over and said, I need to smile. Yeah. And it doesn't do that. You, your conscious mind hasn't smiled for in my case, nearly 60 years. <laughs> so it's like walking a plank. You could easily walk a six-inch plank of wood across this floor without wobbling, falling, talking to your friends while you're doing it. But put that plank 100 feet in the air over a ravine and suddenly your brain kicks in and says, I'm going to walk. Mm. And your brain not walked again. Yeah. However many years you've been alive. So 
your brain kicks in. So this is dangerous. I'm going to do it. It fail. So it's trying to get the brain to shut down again and get back to the, 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 the real you, normality. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And we only have to think about how they look. You have to think about as well how they look and how they sound and how they come over. How hard is that to do that? <laughs> That must be so difficult. It's a real challenge, it really is. And it's amazing to see people go through the process from coming in, having a script and talking. I am really <laughs> concentrating to saying, look, be normal, be natural, be human. And take them through the process and how we coach them to say, look, these are your words, you own them and just be yourself. Yeah. And if you have to ad lib a little bit and you don't follow the script down to the T, that's not the end of the world. It's more about getting the message right yeah. and you being human. And that's the biggest thing that we really focus on with regards to all our content and our storytelling is about what's your story and who do you help? And you try to get them to think back about themselves and they forget about the lights, camera and the action. Yeah. Yeah. They just start talking and talking from the heart is where the real stories come from then. Yeah. So I'd like to say thank you both for joining me in this session. It's been a lovely insight to hear about what you guys do and how you help business folk and some, obviously you do some personal portraits as well. I, I hope, you know, you're going to come join me for a, another session in the studio as well, where we can learn a bit more about what motivates you, what drives you to do what you do. And maybe you can share some funny and some maybe uh, not so funny stories that you had over the time <laughs> as well. I think we can do that. Yeah, I'd better be quiet because standards drop dramatically. <laughs> yeah. <after> story. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank oh. you so much. We've really yeah, enjoyed it. Thank you for looking no. after us. It's been really nice.